Hi and welcome to another technology video. So in this one we're going to be showing you how you can configure your DHCP server on your PFSense firewall. So uh, in this video we, <clears throat> we're only going to be talking about IPv4 because we don't use IPv6 ourselves but um, the options are all there if you need to use them. Um, we're also not going to be talking about the DHCP relay, uh, so that's if you're running a DHCP server on your network somewhere else. So we have got uh, a basic flat network, we've got a router that's in modem only mode, that then passes through into our PFSense box, and then our PFSense box uh, handles all of the IPv4 traffic for our flat network. Um, so that's what we're going to be showing you how to set up today. So let's get started. So <clears throat> the first one that we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is to uh, log on to our PFSense box. Uh, I'm not going to go through any of these settings. If you wanted to know how we've got things set up, then um, you can check out one of our previous videos on uh, how we use um, PFNG, uh, PF Blocker NG and also Snort on our network. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is to talk through our IPv4 DHCP server setup. So the first thing you want to do is you want to navigate to your services and then go to your DHCP server and I'll talk through what the options are here. So as you can see here we've got the DHCP server set on our LAN interface or LAN interfaces. <coughs> Um, you can tell it if you want to ignore boot p queries. Uh, we don't, so um, we leave that unchecked. And then also, if you want to define uh, which devices you want to um, pick up the DHCP leases from the server, sort of like an access control list. <clears throat> and then also, if you want to, um, whether you want to reject clients or whether you just want to ignore them. So uh, the difference there is rejected will send a packet back to the device that's trying to try, trying to query the DHCP server and tell it that it's been um, uh, rejected and ignored is basically it will just drop the traffic so there won't be any response sent back to the client. <clears throat> uh, this option here so does your client have any um, bespoke identifiers in its DHCP request? If it does um, then you can tick this box to say that uh, you can ignore that um, unique identifier, it won't be recorded in the lease. So moving on to the subnet setup, so this is picked up from your, um, your LAN, so your main um, subnet that your PFSense box is configured to, so um, in our instance the IP address is in that range so it picks it up here and it picks up the subnet mask and it gives you the available range here. What we've done on this next section is we have kept the first 10 and the uh, last um, 10 available for uh, fixed IP addressing. So because we run a, NAS, a couple of NAS servers that are on fixed IP addresses, uh, we are going to change this to um, to 30. So that gives us a usable range of plenty of uh, plenty of IP addresses, but it gives us um, IP addresses on either side of the DHCP range to use for for st static. So we're going to save that. Okay, so that's done. <clears throat> um, next, if you've got additional pools, so um, if you've got, I don't know, for instance, say you've got uh, a group of servers on your network um, that you want to have a, a specific range for, you can then configure that here. Okay, so moving on to the, uh, the servers on your network. So if you're running um, a Windows server, you can configure your Wins uh, IP address of the server in here and if you're running additional um, or alternate DNS servers then you can specify them here and whatever you set here will be pushed out to the client. If you leave them blank it's going to use your PFSense box IP address so um, for our uh, because we're running a, a DNS resolver 
um, on our PF Sense box as well. We leave those blank and it just issues the IP address of the PF Sense box out as the DNS server. Again, your other options specified here. If you're using a specific gateway, um, then this is where you would configure it. Um, so if your PF Sense box isn't your gateway, then you can um, specify that here. Also the domain name. So ours is just using the local domain. So we leave all of this, all of this blank, but you can specify all the different options in here. So these are the DHCP options or the main DHCP options. I'm not going to talk about any of these too much. If you're using dynamic DNS, you configure it here uh, and so on and so forth. NTP server. So if you want to specify um, to your clients to use your PF Sense box as an NTC, NTP server, providing your client can support that in the DHCP options, then you would specify it here. Then moving down here to this section, I'll talk about this a little bit. This is where you can specify alternate DHCP options um, and their values in this section here. So let me just show you quickly uh, what those options are. So as you can see here, here are all the extra DHCP options and their corresponding numbers, what they all mean um, and what each of them, when you specify them, what all of those DHCP options um, will do. So I will leave this um, document on our website. I'll leave a link in the description below. So if you want to download this table um, for all of the DHCP options, then you can. Okay, so let's move back. Okay, so so that's all there is to it in terms of the DHCP options here. Um, next, what we can do is we will move on and have a look at the um, the leases that we've got. So to find all of the information from your DHCP server, you would come up to status and then scroll down to your DHCP leases or your DHCP v6 leases. So if we go in here, this gives us a report of all of the leases in our network. As you can see uh, down the bottom here is a nice um, uh, list for uh, your system. So as you can see here, here's our range. Here's the change that we made earlier to uh, end our DHCP uh, pool at 230 and the number of leases in use. Uh, over on the right hand side here, if your client supports Wake on LAN, um, that will be shown by this, uh, this power option here and you've got the ability to um, send it a Wake on LAN packet. For instance, if it's on, offline and you want to wake it up, you would do so by clicking on the uh, Wake on LAN packet. If you want to delete the lease, click on the delete button um, and what that means basically, you will only see that uh, delete option if the device is set to offline. So if it's online, uh, you won't see the delete and you also won't see the uh, wake on LAN packet uh, because obviously it's already online and it's not required. Uh, if you want to create a wake on LAN mapping, you can do so by clicking on the dark uh, blue cross or the the white blue cross with a dark background and if you want to add a static mapping so if you want to um, specify your um, if your device is not using DHCP and it's actually got a fixed IP address then you can create your static mapping from here so that is all there is to it in terms of your leases and how you can track those devices through your network <clears throat> what we can do is uh, we'll now move back to our DHCP relay. So this is an active, but um, if you're running a DHCP server, I'll just explain what I mean by this. So um, previously we used to run Pi Hole on a Raspberry Pi, uh, and that acted as our DHCP server before we implemented this PF Sense box. Um, so if you um, used a similar sort of set up then you can tell your PF Sense box that actually if anybody queries to get a DHCP lease from um, your PF Sense box itself then you can tell it where to actually go and get that lease from that's what the relay does acts as a relay server 
that's all there is to it in terms of DHCP setup for your PFSense box in terms of IPv4. If you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so uh, you don't miss out on any future videos. Um, just like to say thanks for watching.